Chapter 26, One of Us is Lying, Bronwyn, Sunday, November 4th, 10 o'clock a.m. We're quite the crew at Until Proven offices Sunday morning, me, Mrs. Collie, and my mom, who was willing to let me go, but not unsupervised. The small, sparsely furnished space is overflowing, with each desk holding at least two people. Everyone's either talking, you're urgently on the phone, or pounding away on a computer, sometimes both. Busy for a Sunday, I comment as Eli leads us to a tiny room crammed with a small table and chairs. Eli's hair seems to have grown three inches since it was on the Kel Powers Investigates. All of it is upward. He runs a hand through his mad scientist curls and sends them even higher. Is Sunday already? There aren't enough chairs, so I sit on the floor. Sorry, Eli says. We can make this quick. First off, Miss McCauley, I'm sorry about your son's arrest. I understand he's remanded He's remanded to a juvenile detention center instead of an adult fac facility, which is good news. As I told Bronwyn, there's not, not much I can do given my current workload, but if you're willing to share whatever information you have, I'll do what I can to provide suggestions or maybe a referral. Mrs. McCauley looks exhausted, like, but like she's made an effort to dress up a, a little and navy pants in a lumpy gray cardigan. My own mother is in her usual effortless chic and leggings, tall boots, a cashmere sweater coat, and subtly, in a subtly patterned infinity scarf. She, the two of them couldn't be more different. Mrs. McCauley tugs at the frayed hem of her sweater as though she knows it. Well, here's what I've been told, she says. The school's received the call that Nate had drugs in his locker. From who? Eli asks, scribbling on a yellow notepad. They wouldn't say. I think it was an anonymous. But they went ahead and removed it, removed his lock Friday after school to check. They didn't find any drugs, but they did find a bag with Simon's water bottle and EpiPens, and all the EpiPens from the nurse's office that went missing the day he died. I run my fingers along the rough fiber of the rug, thinking of all the times Addie's been questioned about those pens. Cooper too. They've been hanging they've been hanging over our heads for weeks there's no way even if nate were actually guilty of something that he'd be dumb enough to leave them sitting in his locker ah eli's voice comes out like a sigh but this but his head stays bent over his legal pad so the police got involved and they well, they got a warrant to search the house saturday morning miss mccauley continues and they found a computer in nate's closet with this journal i guess they are calling it all those Tumblr posts that have been popping up everywhere since Simon died. I raise my eyes and catch Mother staring at me, a kind of disturbed pity crawling up across her face. I hold her gaze and shake my head. I don't believe any of it. Ah, Eli says again, but this time he does look up, but his face remains calm and neutral. Any fingerprints? No, Mrs. McCauley says, and I exhale quietly. What does Nate say about all of this? Eli asks. That he had no idea how any of these things got into his locker or his house, Mrs. McCauley says. Okay, Eli says. And Nate's locker hadn't been searched before this? I don't know, Miss McCauley admits. And Eli looks at me. It was, I recall. Nate says he had been searched the first day they questioned us. His locker in his house. The police came with dogs and everything, looking for drugs. They didn't find any. I add hastily, with a sideways glance at my mother before I turn back to Eli. But nobody found Simon's things or computer then. Is your house typically locked? Eli asks Miss McCauley. It's never locked, she replies. I don't think the door even has a lock anymore. Huh, Eli mutters, scribbling on his pad. There's something else, Miss McCauley says. Her voice wavers. The district attorney wants Nate moved to a regular prison. They're saying he's too dangerous to be in juvenile center. A chasm cracks open in my chest as Eli sits bolt upright. It's the first time he's dropped his impartial lure mask and shown some emotion. The horror on his face just terrifies me. Oh no, 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 no. That would be a disaster. Excuse my language. This, was his lawyer going to stop that? We haven't met him yet. Miss McCauley sounds near tears. Somebody's been appointed, but they haven't been in touch. Eli drops his pen with frustrated grunt. Possession of Simon's things isn't great. Not great at all. People have been convicted on less, but the way they got this evidence, I don't like it. Anonymous tips, things that weren't there before conveniently showing up now, in place that aren't hard to access combination locks are easy to pick and if d if da is talking about sending nate to a federal prison at age 17 any lawyers worth a damn should be blocking the hell out of that 
He rubs a hand across his face and scowls at me. Damn it, Bronwyn, this is your fault. Everything Eli's been saying is making me more and more sick except this. Now I'm just confused. What did I do? I protest. You brought this case to my attention and now I have to take it. I do not have time, but whatever. That's assuming you're open to a change in counsel, Mrs. Macaulay. Oh, thank God. The relief surging through me makes a limp and almost dizzy. Mrs. Macaulay nods vigorously in Eli's eyes. I can help, he says. I say eagerly. We've been looking into... I'm about to tell Eli about the red Camaro, but he holds his hand out with a forbidding expression. Stop right there, Bronwyn. If I'm going to represent Nate, I can't speak with other represented people in this case. If it could get me disembarred and put at risk of the implication. In fact, I need you and your mother to leave so I can work out some details with Mrs. Macaulay. But I look helplessly at my mother, who's nodding and getting to her feet, securing her handbag over her shoulder with an air of a fin finality. He he's right, Bronwyn. You need to leave things with M Mr. Kinfelder and Mrs. Macaulay now. Her expression softens as she meets Mrs. Macaulay's eyes. I wish you the best of luck with all of this. Thank you, Mrs. Macaulay says, and thank you, Bronwyn. I should feel good, mission accomplished, but I don't. Eli doesn't know half of what we do, and now I'm supposed to tell him?